Well, it's yet another exciting logic movie about how to construct truth tables. Uh, in this one, we have two formulas. These are the sorts of longer formulas that people typically make mistakes with on the tests. And so let's work through these together. We have two different sentence letters. And so how many rows do we have to worry about? It's just four. We generate them in the standard way. True, false, true, false. Under the second one, true, true, false, false. This is probably not a bad point at which to ask the question, how many, if you had three different sentence letters, how many rows would you have to list and how do you do it? It's going to be eight rows, right? You're going to have the case where they're all true. Down at the bottom, you're going to have the case where they're all false. And the easy way to generate these is to just say true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false underneath the first row, underneath the, in the first column, alternate by ones. In the second column, alternate in pairs. Go true, true, false, false, true, true, false, false getting kind of small there. In the third one, alternate by fours. So four trues, four Fs. This is just an easy trick for generating all the possible combinations when you have three sentence letters. I've said in class that I won't give you any tables to do that have got more than three sentence letters. All right, so back to the one that we're working on here. Let's look at this first formula, and even before we write in any columns down here, let's go up to the top and let's number the connectives in the order that we want to work on them. Let's start with the question, what's the main connective for the whole formula? It's the arrow. Well, we know that we always work on the main connective last, and so we're going to be doing the arrow last. So what we'll need to do is get a value for what's in front of the arrow, and a value for what's after the arrow and then put them together for the arrow. All right, uh, so that means let's just look at this side. What's the main connective for dash s wedge t? It's clearly the dash, so we'll want to work on the wedge first and then we'll work on the dash. Now let's go to the other side. What's the main connective for dash s ampersand dash t? Well, of course it's the ampersand, so what we'll need to do is get a value for dash s, and then for dash t, and then for the ampersand. Then, once we've got all that done, we'll be able to generate a value for the arrow. Okay? One way to think about this is you're working from the inside of parentheses outwards. Always start as deep inside parentheses as possible and ask yourself what's the main connective, and then work outward from there. All right, S wedge T. If we wanted to, we could rewrite the S column and the T column underneath these. And if that helps you, by all means, do that. But in, it seems to me that it's just as easy to say, well, what are we doing? We're comparing S and T. Well, they're listed right here. Let's just go over here and say S is true, T is true. All right, when S is true and T is true, you get true. When S is false and T is true, you get true. When s is true and t is false, you get true. When they're both false, you get false. All right? And so I've gone straight to step one. I skipped the step of writing in the guide columns. Now, I look at uh, this dash. It negates what's inside the parentheses. And so I go false, 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 true. And I'm going to cross that out. All right, next step is dash s. So I'm not going to write in the S. I'm just going to go straight to writing in the negation of S, which, of course, is just going to be false, true, false, true. The same thing for dash T. It's the negation of the T column, so I'm going to get false, false, true, true. Now I work on the ampersand. Ampersands are true only when both parts are true. False ampersand false is false. True ampersand false is false. False ampersand true is false. True ampersand true is true. Cross off the stuff I just used. Now, the only thing I've got left is step six. Well, what's it going to compare? The main connective from the front side plus the main connective from the back side. So, false arrow false is 
true. What's the rule for the arrow? It's true except the famous T arrow F case. That's the only time an arrow is false. So false arrow false is true. False arrow false is true. False arrow false is true. True arrow true is true. This formula is always true. It's a tautology. If you look at it, it makes good sense, right? Notice it's really kind of just De Morgan's turned into a conditional. Dash S wedge T by De Morgan's that equals dash S ampersand dash T. So it makes good sense that it's a tautology. Okay, now the sort of formula that gives people the most trouble. And I think the the problem people have with this is they look at this and they don't see what the main connective is. What is the main connective? In fact, it's the dash out here on the front. It's not the arrow. The dash is the only thing that's completely outside parentheses. Notice, if we connect the parentheses, we see that that's together and that's together. And now there's another level of parentheses, and that's combining everything, just like that. So the dash is the only thing outside. Now, let me get rid of that mess that I just made there. Okay. Um, so this dash outside is going to be the last thing that we work on. With that in mind, let's ignore it, and let's look inside that set of parentheses and ask, what's the main connective inside the parentheses? Well, in fact, it's the arrow. So what we need to do is get a value for this thing in front of the arrow and a value for this thing in front of the arrow so that we can work on this. Well, the main connective for this chunk right here is that dash right there. So we'll need to work inside these parentheses first. Main connective inside these parentheses is the wedge, so we'll work on the dash and then the wedge. And then we would come out and work on that dash right there. That all be fine. All right, so one, two, three. Let's see, we also need a value for this side. Main connective inside of here is the double arrow. So let's see, let's call that four. Double arrow would be five. This dash then would be six. Now once we had all of that, then we could do the arrow as seven and then the last step would be to come outside the parentheses and do that as, as 8. Um, you just really have to practice this a bit until you get comfortable with seeing what's going on when you've got uh, parentheses like this. But remember, you start as deep inside parentheses as possible and then build out from there. Okay, so we've got all our numbers in place. Um, when I look at dash s wedge t, um, obviously, I need a value for dash s, so let me just take the opposite of s. What I will get is false, true, false, true. Now I need a value for the wedge. I don't have anything for t. Probably the best thing to do at this point is go ahead and write in the guide column for t. True, true, false, false. You could just say, well, let me combine t and the let me combine this dash s column and this t column in my head and go straight for the wedge. But I think most people are do better if they go ahead and put something in there for t so it's it's right here when they're comparing these things. The wedge is true whenever either part, either input is true, so false wedge true gives us true. True wedge true gives us true. False wedge false, that's false, true wedge false, that's true. Cross out the stuff that we just used. Next step is this dash, so that negates what we just created. So we're going to get false, false, true, false. Cross that thing off. And now, let's see, we're supposed to work on this side. All right, so we start with dash t, which of course is false, false, true, true. And now we need a value for s, double arrow that. So again, I think the best thing to do is go ahead and write in the value for s. You could do it in your head, but it doesn't, it's not really that hard to write this stuff in. So true double arrow false is false. Because what's the rule for the double arrow? True when same. False double arrow false is true. True double arrow true is true. False double arrow true is false. 
Cross out the stuff we just worked on. Step six says negate what's inside the parentheses. So we're going to get true, false, false, true. Cross that off. It's time for step seven, which is the arrow. And what are we comparing? This to this. Arrow is true except when you have that thing. So false arrow true is true. False arrow false. True. True arrow false. False. False arrow true. True. Cross those things off. That's a true. Okay, so we now have the main connective for everything inside the parentheses. That's right here. And the final step is to negate it with this dash. So that will give us false, false, true, false, and we circle it because that is the main connective for this entire formula. Did I mention this was exciting? Oh, no, it's not at all exciting. It's incredibly boring, um, and a little practice will certainly convince you of that. Good luck with the studying.